All right, this is one of the slickest ways I've ever seen to finish off a wing. Uh, they're very, very light, real strong. Uh, there again, it's something that uh, if you're making planes quick and easy. I'm a physics teacher, so my students are going to learn to fly these things. So if they ruin them, I don't want to have too much energy involved. But it's an easy way to finish these planes off. I'm going to take a little bit of Elmer's glue, just good old white El Elmer's glue. You could do the same thing if you use uh, wood glue. I've had uh, tight bond uh, that I've used. Easy to do, easy to work with, same concept that's associated with them. You want to take a little bit of the glue and you want to cut it with water so that it's about 50% as uh, thick as it is to start with. Now, when I say 50% thick, that doesn't mean 50% water. It just simply means take the consistency of it, reduce the consistency so it flows easier. Now, it's one of those things that you just got to kind of practice with. You can see some of the pieces that I've done. Uh, these are my elevators and stabilizers for my uh, P51. They were done right over the top of uh, balsa. I was just a huge disappointment when I did them because they warped, they molded. Yeah, I was so disappointed with them, I was just ready to throw them away. And they came back two days later and they'd flattened themselves out. So they just hadn't completely uh, cured. Once they did, I think you can see, they're flat. I was just amazed with them. Now I haven't trimmed them up yet. I'll trim them up when I get ready to put them on the plane. Um, they're paintable now. The balsa is paintable anyway. But this way it makes it uniform with the rest of the plane. Now you can see I've got that relatively thin compared to what it was before. And you need to make sure that it's smooth because you're going to be able to brush it. I'm using one of the cheap foam brushes to brush it on. Now, what I'm using to cover it with is just masking paper you buy down at Home Depot or Lowe's. It's inexpensive. You take it, I run my plane out. I've already matched the length and width of my wing. I sanded it here a few moments ago. I'm going to have just a little bit extra. You don't want to work with any extra too much on these because it just, as it gets wet, it's hard to manipulate around. So what I'm going to do is take my paper. I'm going to take my leading edge and figure out about where my leading edge is. That's going to be rolled over underneath the bottom. My trailing edge, I'm going to work with it first. And exactness is not what we're looking for here. Speed is what we're looking for. All this stuff will get painted anyway. So once I've got this piece of paper, now I've got to remember uh, the order I'm doing it. I'm going to do the bottom of the wing first. This is a semi-symmetrical airfoil. So I'll do the bottom first and that way my top edge will lead over the top and uh, hide all my seams when I get finished. So I'm going to roll my um, wing over. I coat it with the glue. And I'd like to say be generous, but I don't mean that. You don't want any extra on it that you don't have to have because eventually it'll give you grief. Also, you want to do just a little ways up the trailing edge and about as far up the leading edge over on the back side of it as you think your glue is going to, or your paper is going to extend that you just cut extra. Now once I've got that, and I've got to work with it relatively quickly, I want to get all the extra off of it that's not going to be used. Coat it uh, liberally and then scoop it back off. Now at this point you can either put it right on there if you're really good. I'm not that really good with this, so I, uh, I'd rather lubricate both sides of the paper. It moves a lot better if I do it that way. I did it the other day without having it both sides of the paper coated, and all I ended up with is a huge mess because it's stuck and I couldn't move it. This way it'll at least you can push it around a little bit. And you can see I've got that coated. I'm ready to put it on. Now I'm going to put down with my leading edge about three eighths of an inch from my excuse me from my trailing edge, and I'm going to wrap that right on up the back of it. I picked that up to show it where you can see it. You can see my trailing edge. I'm coating it. I'm pushing it up here tight. Once I've got it somewhat worked in, I'm going to tug on it as best I can. You see the wrinkles they are starting to form, and they're forming because I'm starting to manipulate it without it getting set. Now, 
Once I've pushed those out of the way, both directions, you can work those air bubbles out. And as the air bubbles go out, and you want to get them out as soon as you can. If you get them, uh, you wait too long, they won't push you out. You wait too long, and the water starts absorbing into the paper, and the paper doesn't push you out, etc. Now I've got those pushed out of that side. Then I come back to the leading edge. I'm going to curl that back up around and just drag it. As you drag it, you might end up with a few wrinkles in it, etc., like that. Try to push them out of the way. They'll go right out. You can always lift it back up and migrate those out of the way like that. And if you believe it, that side is done. Now, I'm going to let it sit here for just a second while I go ahead and, and try to find a piece of paper. I can put that piece of paper on if I want. I just don't like it. It's not big enough. I'm going to cut me another one. I'm going to do just exactly the same thing, except for this time I don't want it to roll over quite as far in the back or underneath. I'm going to mark it. I'm going to lap it over the same amount on the back, but less on the front. Go ahead and dope your edges, leading edge, trailing edge, in exactly the same way that we did a second ago. You want to make sure that you have plenty of glue on the paper on the trailing edge, enough that you're going to overlap where you're going to glue it down on the leading edge, and you're not going to put near as much across there, but you are going to put a little bit. You don't want to go too far back on that trailing edge. Once you've got it like that, set that aside. Doped up. As soon as you get them doped up, start matching your two surfaces. The critical point there again is the same way we did the last one. Don't worry so much about your leading edge. Only worry about your trailing edge. Try to minimize the amount of, of uh, air gap you got on it and roll it right on over. Now on these end pieces, you just want to kind of pinch those together. We'll come back to those in a minute. And here's the important part about this. Once you've got that like that, you can work it. Be careful not to drag your existing one around. You'll create air bubbles. You'll give yourself all kinds of grief for later on you don't want. Once you've got it like that, roll it down. Make sure you don't have any wrinkles in it. Reach back up on the other side. Push forward. Push those air bubbles out. Take your leading edge over the front. If I'd have done a little better job on it, I'd have got a little more accurate. You see I'm about a half inch off on the one side. That's okay. Believe it or not, the paint's going to cover that. Put a paint scheme on it. And we're done. That's how we coat it. Now as it tacks and dries, you've got to be careful not just to let it sit on a surface like I've got it working on here because the water, as it starts giving up the water, just tend to float around. I pinch these off so that they hold each other tight. You don't want to work them too much. You'll end up with wrinkles in them. Now I'm going to take that right there. I'm going to stand it. Looks like I've still got a few air bubbles to do now. It'll continue to degas. You want to be careful with those. You'll get a point where you'll have to come back in a few minutes and double check it, push them down again, and I'm done. Make sure my seams are down. It's finished. This is something that's kind of fun to do. Uh, I do have a bit of a mess here. I'll clean that up when it dries. It's easy to take off when it dries. I usually make my wings three or four of them at a time, and I'm all right with that. The uh, paper will continue to shrink. Once it shrinks, those air bubbles uh, tend to give away. The stuff's really, really sandable when you're done. It'll dry, the glue sands right off. Uh, I know a lot of people paint it with glue when they get done. I'm not going to bother with that. I'll just hit it with paint and it'll, it'll seal up the pores. But it's very sandable when you get done. To doctor your trailing edge, you'll cut, you'll cut out your um, ailerons with a hobby knife, put a little bit more paper in, inside of it so that it's not just open foam. Put your servos in and you're done. Hope you try these. Enjoy.